Star League, I'm Wolf. With me is Moonglade. And we're going into our losers match. Another TVP here for Fantasy. His opponent is Super, though. Yeah, a bit of a hotter opponent, I'd have to say. Would have to agree. And, I mean, Fantasy has shown his one build of the day. So he's going to, unless he's going to come up with something new, in the, uh, unless he has come up with something new in the break, uh, I'd be a little bit worried for him. Starting off at King Sejong Station, very standard map in TVP these days. Uh, as I said in the last TVP, uh, nothing too crazy happens. A lot of Blink Stalker action early on into the transition into mid-game. Usually a bit of a long-winded game on this map, yeah. unless the drops are just too effective. Oh, for sure. Well, here's Super for Invasion Esports. Both these guys actually on foreign teams. In fact, uh, Lenok, of course, being on Yoi, the only Kespa uh, player that we have mm -hmm. in this group is Terminator. The rest of these players actually represent international teams, which is pretty cool. That is really cool. That at the round of 16 at one of the top tier tournaments in the world, we have three players being represented by four organizations. It's really interesting that we're in a state where players have been able to practice well enough on their own to be mm -hmm. able to make it this far. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, generally everyone would think that the Casper teams would just simply be dominating, uh, as as we thought in the when they kind of made the transition, and they were for a while. But now we have players kind of tr coming back and kind of becoming really damn good with that a Casper team. Sure, sure. Well, we have KSS, Deadwing, and Catalina as the maps. Bands, Overgrowth, and Foxtrot for Fantasy. Merry Go Round and Nimbus. A bit surprised to see Merry Go Round banned by Super and not Catalina, which makes me feel like he really likes Blink Stalkers on Catalina. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I, I, I'm not too surprised there. Uh, Merry-Go-Round, definitely a map you want to get rid of uh, unless you plan to do some sort of funky all-in, which wouldn't be a bad idea against Fantasy, who loves to go Command Center first. Now let's see if Fantasy chooses that same strat, that same opening, or if he's going to completely change it up here. I think Sejong is a great map to do something different. You know, do a gas first, drop, for example. But guys, let's go into game number one. This is the loser's match for Group A for the round of 16 of the Neighbor Star League. Terrorist Terran in red spawns at the bottom of the map. It's kind of a controversial name, don't you think? You know, I thought so when I was younger. Now I don't really think so. How much younger? Like when I was like, I don't know, 14, 15 or oh, so. Oh, he had this name back in Brood War? Yeah. Oh. I'd say that's that's about as long ago as I, when I first heard it. To the top left in blue, it's Super. Yeah, he was... Um, Called this for his incredible vulture control for the most part, if I remember correctly. It's right. been a long time, but. Right. Um, was actually uh, the last Terran OSL finalist. He lost to Jongbi, which was a crazy uh, loss because. Yeah, I watched that. Protoss is normally not winning too many titles in StarCraft 1, especially towards the end of it. Definitely not. And uh, Jongbi was uh, one of those dragons, right? Yeah. It was like. Ten dragons or eight dragons? Or I think there was six, six or seven. I can't remember. Uh, my my brood war knowledge is a little rusty after this long. Right, well, I mean, I've been commentating StarCraft two in Korea for nearly four years, and before that, you know, almost a year in the states. So a lot of things get foggy for me too. I, I sometimes remember or remember certain things, but forget which years they were from and whatnot. Yeah. Well, Fancy's gonna go CC first again. Checks for proxies. He's playing the exact same build, and that worries Man. me, Moonglade. Yeah, I. I I don't know, man. Uh, let's see if he does anything different uh, in terms of transitioning. Like, obviously, it's not a bad build because uh, you do normally see Blink Stalkers on this map, and you're going to have more than enough bio to deal with the Blink Stalkers, but transitioning after that, we did see Fantasy go to the mid game on this map and the late game pretty pretty nicely, actually. It just, I think he just made some really bad judgment calls going into the middle of the map, fighting an army that was designed to kill him earlier than later, and he kept trading cost efficiently where he could have just been making a very large, cost-efficient ball against a Colossus-only mass zealot sort of army. I was really impressed with his Viking control. And, you know, some of the big, big-picture choices that he made definitely cost him. But I feel like if he just makes a little bit smarter army movements, like as a whole, mm. not micro, but just movements, like his positioning and his decision as to when to move out, when to sit back and defend, if he can make a little bit better decisions, I, I like his chances, you know, on this map if he plays uh, just a normal Viking style. Now, notice in this game he's already changed up a little bit because he doesn't go triple barracks afterwards. He only goes double barracks. 
And okay, we might add that third one though. <laughs> okay, never mind. Called a little too early. Called a little too early. A little too early. It's all right. Don't don't don't, oh. don't, don't be don't don't be. It's all right, mate. Don't call me out on that. It's just it's okay, just man. Look at that production talents. It's all right. I won't make a Reddit thread this oh, time. Oh, it's just like, try really hard, guys. Now, super super is uh to me. He seems like a, he gives me the impression that he's a protoss that would most certainly punish a CC first. Terran that's going to go CC first every single damn game. Yeah. I kind of get that impression. Maybe not this game, because it is a bit of a harder map to be that aggressive on. Well, it's King game Sejong. one, too, you know, like... You want to feel things out. I mean, you could probably scout that it's going to be CC first and be like, whoa, this is the fourth time today you've done this build, dude. Uh, okay, I'm going to kill you next game. Well, definitely might even consider doing a proxy on, on map two. Uh, if he sees this as CC first, and it's just like, okay, will you... You're not a person, you're a program. You're just like innovation. <laughs> you're a robot and you're programmed to CC first. Well, the Twilight Council opening, very much the common opening on this map. I see it all the time. Yeah, it's it's not too uncommon at all. And let's see how much he commits to it. I feel like a big commitment might throw Fantasy off. Well, I mean, Fantasy is always going for like a lot of bio early on. I mean, he does have that early three racks. He will add two tech labs. I reckon it'll be to the bottom one and to the one on the right. Quote me on that because I want to see how much of a program we ha in fantasy is <laughs> if it actually gets to that stage. Yeah. Bottom racks and the racks on the right are tech labs. Oh, the, thir the top left racks naked. Is no, until, rally his Marines? until reactor. Until reactor. Yeah, he's, so he can rally that one extra Marine a little bit faster. Oh, oh, you were wrong. He's changing things up already. Reactor on the right one. All right. Well played, fantasy. That was the uh, the robot test, and now <laughs> he passes. He passes. He's human. He's human after all. And we already see blink stalkers. What a surprise! Yep. Not a bad choice at all. It's not a charge research on that Faust Twilight Council. Man, that would be cool. We'd it's see not a like high Templar rush. <laughs> see like a zealot Archon all in instead. I mean, it's not unheard of, right? Right. Right. Well, eBay is finishing up up here. And get that quick plus one. We've seen him do. He's playing just straight up the same, besides the placement of the tech labs. Even scans a natural, which he's done every game so far. Unfortunately for him, there's not a lot of information there in any of these games. The tech has always been in the main. Yeah. But, uh. He's a stalker. Gives him, like, a little taste of what might be out there. It's probably Blink on this map. Almost every process Blink on this map. He sees one stalker. He's like, oh, it's Blink for sure. He's got <laughs> Well, I think they make blink anyway. Uh, I think they make at least one stalker anyway, just to deflect anything that comes tries to scout. Yes, but I mean, he has the build so that's going to deflect stalkers, and it's just going to be a normal transition here from super into colossus. One forge, yeah, one and he's going to poke this three barracks army, just yeah. like we've seen already earlier today. Has to be very, very careful. Once blink is done, he could target marauders and kill them and blink back. Yeah. And he's getting really confident now that Blink is almost finished. Oop. Oh, just before it finishes. A and just, just before that Observer was on the high ground to give vision, too. Yeah. Okay, just going to pick off some Marines, not targeting that Marauder. All right, not too bad. He weakens them up, softens them up. It's, it's good. I mean, whatever's going to slow down, this two medivac uh, timing that's going to come out of these uh, starports is fantastic. And I think it might actually just be a mistake that we do see these bio on the map as well. Uh... I mean, there's no reason to be there currently. You might want to move out. Now that he has an extra couple of the Marauders that make things a little bit harder, getting rid of that Observer is going to be very, very important. But there's a second one on the way already. Yeah. Like I said before, Fantasy is just so, so good at picking out these Observers. He's so got some special eyes. I mean, I guess he's run into enough DTs in his career <laughs> in StarCraft 1 to have a special eye for this sort of thing. But a few more gates being added. Powering up and again a lot of pressure with these stalkers. Ooh, this time getting a bit too sloppy there. He's but killed a lot of marines. It's been worth it. Oh, it has, man. Look how whittled down that army is. Two stalkers for eleven marines. Mm. And he's got a third base on the way. Has to get out those colossi there. We do see one out already. Not much else. Not even a, uh, a sentry uh, so far. So much of this army is uh, lower hit points now too because of uh, those pickoffs and that pressure. Medivacs are out, but he's not going to be using those primarily for healing. He's going to be using them for harass. He can actually hit the natural or hit the main while he moves over those army units to the third base. Mm. A couple of sentries walked in as well as the second colossus almost finished. Two Nexus cannons as well. 
to defend this. He's in a prime position to deal with it. And I don't think this is going to get much done, but let's see. Oh, Mothership Coil is kind of out of position now. Yep, and he gets a full unload as well, and he can go for that Robo. Looks like oh, he's going to hit that Robo my. down. Massive mistake from Super. Very, very critical. Completely you know, tunnel vision on that third base. You know what the difference between this game and the Terminator game is? This is the exact same drop. There was an Observer for the spot, that exact drop location for Terminator, and Super did not have one. He had no idea this was coming. Oh, he's adding two Robos now. In the exact same place. <laughs> I think that might even also be a mistake. But well, he might put an Observer over there. I hope so, Moonblade. Yeah, and we are seeing no 5th and 6th gas on the 3rd base now being added. Alright, so it's not going to be the same kind of style that we saw from Terminator either. Drops coming in here to the natural while he hits this 3rd base. The cannon adding some extra deflection power. Another cannon here at the natural. So they're going so standard to just add a cannon because of the proclivity for these players to go for Widowmine drops. But now the cannon's gone at the 3rd base. It's actually just killing probes. A big drop in the main as well. He's hitting all 3 bases at once. Oh, big Widowmine hit on those Stalkers. And he lost almost every Stalker now. Yep. And he's going to lose his Twilight Council, he's going to lose Charge, and he's going to lose the ability to make plus two, two upgrades at his forge. He's going to lose his Cybernex core! Super, Super is just, apart. he's literally falling apart. The pieces, were, I'm watching them fall to the floor. Oh, is he going to get the forge? Yeah, he is. Oh, he could get out of here as well. There's any couple of stalkers. Five stalkers on the map. And he now goes into the natural. Another Widowmine drop. Let's see how much this one gets done. Two Widowmines, in fact, on this drop. Oh. Decent damage. Not bad damage at all. Keeping the Widowmines there. If they get a chance to reset, even more damage for free. The probe kills, not that important compared to the kills on the Robos, the kills on the Forges, the kills on the Cybercore. These pickoffs mean so much more. That's essential tech. You need that tech. And on top of everything else, when you lose your core and you lose your, and you lose your uh, you know, um, Twilight Council, you can't make 2-2. Two -two. Oh, we didn't even deal with these either. You can't make 2-2, two -two, so you got to make remake your Twilight Council. But guess what? You can't make your Twilight Council if you don't have a Cybernetics Core. You can't make Stalkers. He's making double Immortal right now. He hasn't, even, he, is. he hasn't even remade the Twilight, I believe. No, and there's a huge worker lead He's getting shields. shields. He's getting Shields, Wolf. Yeah. He's desperate. He's a desperate man for upgrades, and he doesn't have much. Fantasy has a worker lead plus mules and a third base that's totally secured. Double stop point with Reactor. He is in prime position. He is just playing so well this game. Terrorist Terran. Watch out. The drops, they did all the work he needed to do. The star we see now, uh, time and time again, it's just about getting them to, to run around the map and getting that essential tag is just something that doesn't normally happen. We just don't normally see it uh, do that, that well. It was a big supply block as well for Super. You saw him make that little square of pylons in between his bases. Missed a little bit of production time there. Does have a lot of Immortals out on the map. Something to consider with this Marauder Heavy comp. He's going to have three in just a second. And they're going to have shield upgrades fairly soon. This is a, a moment where Fancy can't really overcommit to aggression. Mm, this is, has been his mistake in the past as well. I think it's just time to just further your upgrade lead. And maybe do a drop if you can, but don't try to fight directly. You know, if he was a fan of pulling the boys, he would be, he'd have won this game by now, I think. Definitely had a window of time where that could have been quite effective. Well, two more Immortals actually coming in, so he's going to have five Immortals with his Colossi. And his Templar Archives, he hasn't started it yet. There are a few Ghosts already on the map. Very interesting that he's added so many Immortals as well. Well, he doesn't have charge, and I think that's part of the reason why. He just wants to have a, a ground army that's a little bit buffered. Because he had those double robos that he replaced, and then he just wanted to... I guess he was like, well, I guess I can't just have gateway units. Yeah. So I need to have these immortals on the ground. I've got a few colossi. It's like, it's, it's, you always see with this kind of army, just the next step is, is a lot of archons with a lot of zealots and immortals. We saw an army cop built like this intentionally out of a player called Ruin uh, a little bit last year. It's not quite like this, because he went Storm as well and had charge, of course, at a normal time because he didn't lose his Twilight Council, but mm. we have seen something kind of like this before. Oh, these those Thoggers are out of position. Those Vikings oh. are great volleys. Not Double drop on the main. Not a bad blink, but yeah, these Colossi have to stay alive. He's just going to wipe them. And then the Immortals, you know, they can fight, but not when one's stuck at the front. Zealots still, still don't have charge. 
He's like, what? You don't have charge? I guess I'll just stim a kite here. Notice how late he could stim. Did he even have to stim for so long? Yeah, and he still has all his EMPs as well, which is going to do so much against his army. These drops are still doing damage at the bases back at home. This is not like Super is playing terribly. You know, it's just Fancy has so much of an edge. There's not much about Super's play we can talk about here. It's just talking about what Fancy is doing with his advantage right now. Four more Vikings, three more ghosts. He can just take this fight. He has an upgrade lead. It's 2 2 versus oh, 1 1 charge. 1. Charge finally finished there. Yeah, a lot of damage There's coming a in. A lot of immortals there at the back. EMP goes down on top of them, but still he pushes this back. He can pick them up if he wants to. Doesn't decide not to. He's just trying to use those four seals against this army, but this is a lot of gateway units. And Blink is done. It's been done for a while. He needs to get back. Yeah, he, he should kill these rocks as well. Okay. A lot of a lot of uh, ghosts in this. No zealots are going to survive. And he's going to be a little bit careful. He cannot overcommit a little too much. Could maybe waiting behind this planetary. Oh, this planetary isn't done. I thought it was finished because I didn't see it on the production tab. Yeah. That's something to consider as well. Oh, another bad fight from Fantasy. Does, oh, does well. Super have a chance? One would not well, I mean, so. not only does he have a chance here, Moonglade, but he's going to stop this base. He might even kill it. It's a lot of damage on these Stalkers. Yeah. Okay. But it's a really important scout that we saw just a second ago. It wasn't intentionally a scout, but that drop scouted that he's still going double Colossus, and he doesn't have a Templar Archive. He was able to see the whole base. He knows there's no go uh, no reason to keep building ghosts. It's better to just keep building those Vikings uh, because that's what's going to deal with the AoE right now. Well, the ghosts are uh, always going to be useful to just simply deal with the, the Zealots as well. And the Immortals. I mean, just blanket the whole army. Yeah, you blanket the whole army. You can wipe out anything extremely quickly, but he does need a little bit more buy to buff for them. Yeah, I think just focusing on Viking production right now and Marauder production is definitely the way to go. Stalkers come in here, try to get some damage on this Planetary. You know, attempt number two, probably to be successful. I don't think Super can muster up an attack fast enough to deny it. But he's taking his own fourth base. And is actually, you know, recovered surprisingly well. He took some great engagements mm. just then. A fancy again having his problems taking clever taking, engagements. Yeah, taking these fights in the middle of the map but always seemed to be a big problem with him. Uh, he definitely does have the composition now to really take on this army. So long as his Vikings get a good, uh, good, a good position and the EMPs are good. And here we go. Yep. And here come those Vikings already getting some good volleys off. The EMPs insanely good. I don't think you could ask for better EMPs on that army hitting all of those Immortals and a ton of those sentries as well. Four Archons being made, but simply too late. Yep. I mean, he, he will have to move back here because a few uh, Zealots do warp in from the side. But it's just his reinforcements that are so strong right now. And he can't attack into this planetary. Another problem that he has here yeah. with his position. Yeah, it's simply just... No way he's going to be able to do that. More ghosts have to be made yeah, to do it. Now with he has to make the ghosts because he needs the ghosts. There are archons. There's no colossi. He wiped those out. So Vikings no longer the issue here. Ghosts are so important, but he lost a lot of bio in general. So he really needs to be careful about how he manages his resources. He made a ton of barracks, which is great because now he has so many tech labs. He can have constant marauder production as well as adding those ghosts in. He's going to try to move out across the map and try to find a, an engagement. But again, this has been Fantasy's weakness in this series. I feel like it might be better to just turtle up, get a comp that's better than Supers, get those ghosts out. He's going to have 3-3. Three, three. He's going to have the plus 2 for his Vikings. What's the upgrades on Super right now? He doesn't have 3-3, three, three, right? He has 3-1-2. Three, 2-1-2. Uh, one, two. Two, one, two. Okay. So yeah, he's, he's up in upgrades. Just turtle a little bit. Just wait. Just wait, man. Make ghosts and wait because you have the army composition. There's no storm. There's no storm coming out. All you have to do is EMP this army. He sees it. He sees no Templar. He sees a whole lot of Archons sit behind the planetary. Oh, I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to see him try to engage this one. Okay, a few Mirage actually stem and run to the right side to try to pick off a, a pylon. He's like, he doesn't have to force anything here though. He really doesn't. He can wait just a little bit longer. Max out. That was pretty incredible, by the way. The fact, the fact that he was able to pick that pylon off and save all of his Marauders. Yeah. Okay, five more ghosts to join this army. If he can blanket EMP those Archons with the upgrade advantage he has and the Viking count that's sufficient to deal with these just, just two Colossi on the map. More than enough. Should be fine. Do not try to meet on Super's terms. Force Super to engage on your terms. You have the upgrade advantage. Okay, Super's going to go for it. He sees Fancy move down the ramp. And a ton of Archon damage on these Vikings, oh, but they still get much. the job done. Yeah, it doesn't matter now. Blanket EMP, all the Zelts. 
have lost all their shield. As long as he stays on the ramp, I feel like he can just deal with this. Yep. And those Archons take... are so low on shields. Yeah. He cannot be taking too many Archon hits, though, which is what Super is looking for. Super has six Archons. He needs more EMPs on those Archons. The engages here on the ramp. The Archons are so key because they hit those clumped up units. The Zealots can't fight that because they can't get a surround, but the Archons are happy to have those units clumped up, and he still has so many of them. EMP is decent here. Another one is pretty good on two of those Archons. Oh, Archon's going to be... Oh, Ghost's going to be very careful. Can't be stepping out too far. And Bakes are starting to get mined out here for Fassi as well. Mm. Fantasy looking for that engagement. He might have found it. Uh, he needs the EMP a little bit more. It's a bit far out there, though, and he's kind of out of energy on his ghosts, it looks like. Oh, he's got a lot of energy, actually. Man. Oh, yeah, actually, I'm just looking at, I'm not looking at your PC. <laughs> he's got plenty. Yeah, he's got a lot of EMPs. He could uh, definitely blanket this army if he wants to, but I think he's just waiting for that perfect engagement. There we go. Great EMP. Oh, actually, I'm looking at your screen. I was assuming there's so many more pretty colors, man. I know, yeah, <laughs> I know what all these hit points are. I got all the health bars. All right, well, those Vikings landing temporarily here. He has to lift. A great EMP there in the middle, but he needs more army with him together to fight this. He has to wait for his reinforcements, and all these engagements that happen at this base, he has to wait for the units to walk there from his barracks, from his main base. He has to walk through the natural, down the natural ramp, then up the ramp to the fourth base, and then they can join the fight, mm. whereas the units of Super just get warped in right at the fourth base, so he can reinforce so much quicker. Yeah. So every time he loses a unit, it's so much easier to replace than Fancy. That's why you see Fancy up in supply, but it looks like his army is smaller a lot of the time. Super's kind of tunnel vision as well. He's not going for that 3-3, three, three. staying on 2-1-2, two, two. and now that Fantasy has... He's got a, a very, very comfortable 3-3. Three, three. Oh, so he's always going to have an advantage. And these Archons are way too exposed. They're getting completely shut down. Nasty EMPs there. The last Colossus falls as well. The shields are all gone on those Immortals. And that's going to be it. GG. Mm. That's all it took, man. It just took one great engagement with a lot of EMPs. And everything just disintegrates. And finally, finally we see patience out of fantasy. We see some patience. You know, we talked a ton about his play. We didn't talk as much about Supers because Super was a man fighting for his life with one arm cut off, right? I mean, Fantasy was just like, I've killed your tech, basically all types of tech. I killed your Robo, then I killed your Twilight Council, then I killed your Forge, and then I got your Cyber Core. What are you going to do? I can do whatever I want.